My name is Andre, and I'm here to present a work we did in Brazil called a formalization of Typed Lua. So basically, Typed Lua is an optional type system for Lua that preserves several Lua idioms. And unlike Dart and TypeScript, it uh, doesn't have deliberated and sound parts. It is a structural type system that uses subtype into order types and combines the consistency relation from gradual type with uh, subtyping to handle dynamic typing. So this means that the dynamic type is only a subtype of itself, but through consistency we can pass a static type whenever we expect a dynamic type, and we can pass a dynamic type whenever we expect a static type. Uh, typing in Lua is a bit challenging, even though Lua is a small scripting language, because Lua has uh, several unusual features, mainly uh, the extensive use of associative arrays for declaring all kinds of data structures in the language. Also, the primary use of Lua is as an embedded programming language. So this means that Lua doesn't have uh, any kind of fixed policies for declaring modules and objects. So uh, this kind of create a DIY, DIY culture in the language where programmers do their own module system and their own object uh, models. So they kind of sometimes diverge in the way they organize code. So in order to create a type system that would be useful for programmers, Lua programmers, we surveyed some uh, Lua files that are stored in the main repository uh, for Lua modules called Ro Lua rocks. So we tried to find how programmers were defining tables, how they were declaring functions. Uh, in Lua, you can declare variadic functions and you can return multiple values in functions. We also tried to figure out how they were doing dynamic overloading. Uh, basically, if they were most of the time asserting input arguments or overloading them. And we also tried to identify how they are doing object-oriented programming and creating modules. So this led us to introduce some novel type system features to try to type check these idioms. And we will show two of these idioms in this talk. The first idiom is uh, called a table refinement. So in Lua, we usually can uh, declare a data structure incrementally. Like here in this example, we have the function new point that actually declares a local point that is an empty table. And then we use field assignment to add field X and field Y to this table. We then also add a field move to this table that works like a method uh, because we are assigning a function that receives as its first parameter the object receiver. And once we have created this uh, module, this uh, object, we can return this uh, object. The other uh, common idiom in Lua is uh, overloading on the return type, mainly for signaling uh, errors in functions. In this example, we have a function that divides two integers. And we can check the second argument. If it's 0, then we can return new plus a string uh, giving the meaning of the error else we can return the uh, regular uh, values. In this case, the result of dividing the two numbers and the reminder. Once we have this kind of function, we can call it and assign their uh, values to uh, new variables. And then we can create a dependency relation between these results. So when we check if the uh, Q is not new, we can assume that both Q and R are integers. If Q is new, we assume then, then R is a string. So to type check the first idiom, table refinement, we introduced uh, a type called table types. Table types uh, are the way typed Lua can uh, describe how Lua tables work. And we have uh, different tags to represent different kinds of tables. Uh, we will not enter in details about this uh, tags, but believe me, they are explained in the uh, paper. Basically, we have unique and open tables that uh, are more flexible table types to control the incremental evolution of table types. We have also fixed table types that are the most rigid ones, and closed table types are similar to records. Then we have two ways to incrementally build these tables. The first one is through field assignment. So, this is just uh, part of that first example translated to the abstract syntax of typed Lua. Here we have a variable point annotated with an 
empty table. We assign an empty table to this uh, variable and it has an empty table at first. Then we assign a field x of time number to this table and the type of point becomes a new table with this uh, field inside. Then we also add the field y and the final uh, type of this table in this example is a table that includes both x and y. Even though these examples look uh, similar, we have to keep in mind that when we are allowing the programmer to change the type of a table, we are may also allowing them to change the type of a table points too. So to try to avoid some typing errors, uh, some mistakes of the programmer, we control the aliasing of tables. In this example, we start the uh, local variable A with an empty table, and then we try to uh, assign alias this table to another variable. The only way we can do this aliasing is uh, we have to make the type of B closed, meaning that we will not add new fields to this table. And then we can do this uh, assignment because the result of uh, aliasing A produces the same uh, type of A, but with a closed tag. But it also changes the type of A from unique to open because unique uh, table types are very flexible. Mean, for instance, they can have covariant mutable fields. So open tables cannot have that, and that's the reason why we do this uh, change. Then, we, since uh, A has an open table, we can add A field, but since B doesn't, uh, is not open, we cannot add any field, so we are preventing X or, uh, B of changing uh, the, the, the value starting in A through B. Uh, currently, a limitation of uh, this tracking is, is that we can only track our unique and open tables that are bound to local variables. This means that we cannot have unique and open tables inside another table. As another example here, we are uh, creating the variable A with uh, uh, just the field X of type integer, and then we are aliasing this variable to uh, local B. So this works because uh, both types match, both the result of A is closed and B are declaring also as closed. Type of A changes to open. And here, when we try to do another alias, when we try to uh, alias A to C, this is not allowed because we are trying to include the type new inside that, uh, the, that another table. So this is not allowed to prevent, for instance, uh, changing the type of field X in C and having an effect in A. But sometimes we want to do, uh, uh, we want to change uh, the types of tables in a safe way. So for this reason, we have the coercion expression. Like in this example, we again start the type of A with an unique table, then we add two fields to this table, and then we are coercing the type of A to also now include uh, the type new inside the field Y. So this works and the type of A is still open and for this reason we still can refine its type to include field Z of type integer. Uh, the evolution of table types is the central idea of typed Lua to handle classes and modules in Lua. Uh, the main way that programmers define modules in Lua is to declare an empty table, like in this example, point works like a class point, and then we add uh, the attributes x and y to this class, and then we add a method move to this class, and finally we have a unique table that describes this class. But when we return this uh, class, actually the type of this class is a fixed type, because fixed type will not allow with it subtyping, and this will allow us to reopen, safely reopen these types uh, in the future to uh, create single inheritance. But with it subtyping is something that we need in object-oriented programming. So objects actually are closed tables, and uh, when we instance a fixed class, we get an open uh, closed table that will allow us to do these kind of things. Uh, the second, the second idiom that we had is overloading on the return types. 
the way we handle this is through projection types. So when we find a uh, function that returns uh, multiple values and actually different results, actually this function is returning a union of tuples. When the uh, type checker finds a union of tuples in a local declaration, an annotated local declaration, it, is, it will uh, store this union of tuples in a projection environment and assign this to a projection variable, a special environment. And then it will assign projection types to variables Q and R. So this means that Q will project to the first components in this union of tuples and the R will project its type to the second components in this tuple. So Q, you will have integer union new and R will have type integer union string. Then when we uh, use an if statement to constrain the type of Q, actually we are uh, changing the union and not the types of Q and R. So this uh, creates a dependency relation between the types of Q and R. And this means that inside the if, we constrain the union type to have just uh, the first part of the union uh, containing just integers. And this means that uh, Q and R both are integers. And in the else part of this if, uh, R is of type string because now the union type is constrained just to the second part that contains new and string. Uh, projection types also cannot appear inside any other types and they can be bound only to local variables. We also prevent assignments to projection types because assignment to these projection types could break the dependency relation that exists between them. Like here in this example, it looks fine we assigning a string to uh, variable r because it is uh, projecting its type to integer union string. But if we allow that, we are also allowing the programmer to break the uh, dependency relation that exists between these types. So this means that uh, we are assuming that r is integer inside if, but now it would actually contain a string. So that's the reason why they are uh, not allowed. Uh, well, uh, that was what I have to talk. Um, we introduced these uh, features to type check some different Lua idioms that we have. Mainly we discussed at table refinement to incrementally build objects and uh, modules and projection types to handle this kind of overloaded functions that signal errors. And we did some uh, evaluation tests of our type system. We type check 29 modules and uh, in this evaluation we, find, we found that we could type check 83% of the exported modules by this, uh, these members. This means that we could give precise static types uh, with no uh, dynamic type for 83% of these uh, members. But these evaluation results also exposed some limitations uh, of our work that indicate some future work. Mainly we have to include overloaded functions, uh, also a way to define generic functions and uh, tables, and also support for operator overloading, another very common idiom in Lua. Another future work that we also did not handle yet is uh, making a soundness proof of our type system to really guarantee that there are no uh, unsafe issues about the rules we created. So that would be another uh, future work. So that's what I had to talk. Thank you for your attention.